This conference will now be recorded. So, very good evening, students. Today, we'll be learning another important topics we are starting today. That is junction transistor, or it is called bipolar junction transistor. So what is a transistor? A junction transistor is a three dimensional, sorry, three terminal, terminal solid state device. It has three terminals like see, we had diode, we had already discussed diode, it has two terminals, two terminals. And transistor we had three terminals okay three terminals and how how is the construction how it works so there there is a very good physics behind the actions of transistor and the construction part, etc. So it is very interesting as well as it is a top to un top, top thing to understand the action of a transistor. So we'll slowly learn the construction of the junction transistor. Then we'll learn about the accents and uses of the transistor. And in between, we'll learn like you had derived or like you had drawn diode characteristics. Similarly, we'll draw transistor characteristics as well. Transistor characteristics in forward bias, reverse bias. So we'll use all those termin uh, terminology like All those terminologies like forward bias, reverse bias, etc., in in this uh, like transistor also in case of transistor also. All right. So if we look back the history, the transistor was actually invented around 1947 by J. Bardeen and is but Bratton, okay they are from bell laboratory of usa bell laboratory bell telephone laboratory okay bell telephone laboratory okay so they had first invented point invented point transistor point transistor not the junction transistor we'll look what is junction transistor okay so they had actually invented point transistor and later on by william shockley shockley william shockley in 1951 had invented the junction bipolar junction transistor. So 19, sorry, 1951, William Shockley. Okay. William Shockley, W. Shockley. He had invented bipolar junction transistor. You might be thinking why this bipolar is actually bipolar in the sense it has uh, it has back to back two pn junction pn junctions okay back to back two pn junctions okay L like if i draw a simple diagram of a junction transistor like a uh, junction transistor
so here there might be a boundary okay this region may suppose if this is p region then you have n both sides okay okay so we'll learn these things again so there are two back to back pn junctions okay now we'll see there are different types of semiconductor uh, sorry different types of transistor first of all we need to know there are three regions in the transistor okay three regions as we have seen in case of diode it has only p and n only p and n only one junction and only one depletion layer in between right we'll see there are two junctions look here one is n this is p and this is n again so you have three regions or three terminals see this is one another one is this another one is this so these three terminals are actually known by different name one is called emitter the middle one is called base which is connecting both sides actually okay and the third terminal is called <clears throat> collector <clears throat> excuse me so there are three terminals one terminal is called see one terminal is called emitter 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 which can emit charge carrier okay base base in the sense it is actually uh, the common for both sides this side also this side also so this is called base this is the region in between two regions called emitter and connector so it is the sandwich part okay or the interface part so base is actually connecting emitter and collector okay now this is n p n how you keep <coughs> the base region like whether you keep the base region as n or p type semiconductor depending on that there are two types of semiconductor one is n p n which i am showing you here where the base region is p and both side emitter and collector is of n type semiconductor okay both are of n type semiconductor <clears throat> so this is n p n emitter collector base the name of the emitter collector base if we utter back to back then that is one type of semiconductor like n p n so n p n transistor has circuit symbol like see you you have learned in case of diode we had circuit symbol like this right like this okay and in case of general diode we had like this similarly for transistor also there are circuit symbols and since we have two types of semiconductor sorry two types of transistor one is npn and if we keep the base region as n then we can say pnp look this is pnp so when the base region or common region is n then it is called pnp pnp and here npn okay i am showing you both npn and pnp this is this is called sorry this is called n p n transistor okay n p n transistor this is a circuit symbol in this case you have to see this is n p n so the direction you look there is a circle and inside the circle there are some there are the terminals drawn see this is the base region this is the collector region and this is emitter emitter so emitter terminal collector terminal and base terminal so these three terminals are shown here and you can see one good thing 
that there is a direction given there is a there is an arrow given with the emitter okay why so this arrow actually indicates arrow indicates indicates conventional conventional current direction current direction okay in the transistor so this arrow actually gives the direction of conventional current in transistor all right then we have pnp transistor where n is the base region or common to both the side okay so this is called pnp transistor and see pnp means this is p type semiconductor this is n type semiconductor this is again p type semiconductor okay and in case of pnp transistor this is the circuit circuit diagram you should actually distinctly remember which one is pnp which one is npn so this is actually pnp pnp and this is npn i'll tell you the difference to remember both look look similar similar but there is a distinct a distinction only in the arrow only in the arrow look this arrow is outward in case of npn transistor but in case of pnp transistor this is inward so that is what you have to point out okay you have to note this point that pnp transistor has arrow in the circuit diagram like uh, yes static uh, this thing circuit diagram equivalent circuit diagram the emitter should have arrow inward okay towards the base so that means the arrow is towards the base and in this case the arrow is from base to base to emitter emitter okay so that is the thing so the uh, what we have learned so far there are two types of semiconductor n p n p n p and their circuit symbol we have learned and what is the difference between the circuit symbol in pnp case pnp type of transistor circuit diagram in circuit diagram the arrow in the emitter is towards the base but it is out of the base so that is the basic difference difference okay now see in this case we know we know if we have junctions if we have junctions there will be a depletion region if this is p if this is n there will be depletion region at each junction depletion region okay at each junction there will be a depletion region like see in this case this is the emitter this is the base so there will be there will be depletion region between base and emitter at the same time this base is common to this collector also so in between collector base junction also there will be depletion region okay and see depletion region play an important role in the diode we have seen right in the current in the flow of current or controlling the current or controlling the flow of charges this depletion region they have an important role so we have in case of pn junction transistor we have two depletion regions okay two depletion regions one between emitter and base when the base is common okay this is called emitter base junction and the and the depletion layer which is created between collector and base is called collector base junction okay so one is called emitter base junction emitter base junction junction this is the one okay we can write some sometime 
EV junction or BE junction emitter base junction okay and collector base junction is this one this is the base and this is the collector so see in this case you know when we bias any device we connect that device with a battery supply or power supply and power supply basically has two terminals mainly positive and negative right but this is a three terminal device when we want to bias this transistor we have to use any of the terminal as you as common terminal any of the terminal has to be used as common terminal okay so in this case suppose the base base is common terminal so that's why we get emitter based junction then collector based junction okay in this case also npn transistor here also base emitter based junction eb and this is cb collector based junction okay eb and cb junctions are there collector based junction is abbreviated as cb junction okay so what we have learned that in this pn junction there are back to back two junctions pn junctions and there will be two depletion regions produced and we have to properly bias this these pn junctions this these two junctions eb junction or cb junction to use the transistor in various applications okay in various applications generally transistor can be used in two ways okay two it has two different types of applications one application is as an amplifier an amplifier amplifier we'll discuss this in detail later amplifier means if you suppose you have a transistor like this you feed some input voltage vi and get output voltage over here v out so if this v input is 10 you might be getting here some 50 volt okay that means the signal is amplified okay if this is 10 volt over here while you have fed 10 volt you are getting 50 volt okay this is c the input is amplified by five times okay so this is how this is the use of an amplifier sorry use of an of a transistor as an amplifier another use of the transistor is as a switch transistor can be used as a switch also as a switch okay so when we use a transistor as an amplifier or as a switch the biasing will not be identical biasing will not be identical we'll see today how we have to bias how we have to bias this pnp or npn transistor to to make it use like make use of the transistor as an amplifier so if we want to use a transistor as an amplifier how to bias the transistor or different junctions how to bias the different junctions and when we will be using a switch how to bias the junctions see i'll just tell you briefly later on we'll discuss again in detail in the application part of this transistor so there are two junctions right one is eb junction eb junction and another one is cb junction cb means collector based junction another one is the emitter based junction so when we are using as amplifier 
as an amplifier that time this has to be forward bias fb i am writing fb so emitter base junction has to be forward bias and this has to be reverse bias collector base junction has to be reverse bias rb okay so this is the thing now today what we'll do we'll see if we bias if we want to bias pnp or npn transistor how we can make the biasing circuit and how the transistor works or act see transistor through transistor what happens current flow or charge carrier flows so how charge carrier flows and what what are related current in the transistor okay how are they related to each other and how we get the current in transistor so those things like see in conductor when charge carrier moves from one place to another we get current isn't it so similarly here also charge carrier flow okay charge carrier flow here in transistor from one junction to other junction okay or from one terminal to other terminal so for that there will be a current and what the what are the charge carriers in transistor since we are using either like we are using pnp transistor or npn transistor that means we have p type semiconductor n type semiconductor right so in any transistor there are two types of charge carriers one is the electrons where we have n type transistor electrons are majority charge carrier and in case of p type semiconductor we have majority holes okay majority holes so we'll see when we bias a transistor how holes and electrons move from which junction to what junction and how they give rise to current their motion give rise to current so those things we will see in detail today okay basically the action part how transistor act so this is very very interesting and also important to understand the transistor action so first we will take up npn transistor i'm sorry i i don't know whether you are able to see the figure properly or let me move it up little bit okay all right so we'll see the action of in npn transistor first look here npn transistor means the emitter in this case emitter is n type semiconductor n type semiconductor when we are going to bias any transistor we have to see which terminal is of what made of which type of semiconductor like say in this case npn transistor emitter is n look here emitter is n n type semiconductor and base is p type semiconductor that 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 is here written as p base region okay and again n type semiconductor is the collector so we have three regions like two depletion region you look here between emitter and base this is the one and between collector and base this is other one okay i have forgotten one thing to discuss before i uh, discuss this i'll discuss it here so there are three regions emitter base and collector i have not discussed their properties and what are the actions of this base collector etc see emitter of a transistor has the role to supply supply charge carriers okay supply charge carriers it will emit charge carriers and that will flow through the base region so emitter actually depending on their actions their structure is also different and doping level is also different like see emitter has to supply the whole charge carrier so it is actually highly or heavily doped region 
heavily doped region i'm sorry heavily doped region so emitter is heavily doped if it is heavily doped means what if it is n type then it has electrons electrons concentration much much greater than the concentration of holes okay that is the that is the thing so this is actually heavily doped heavily doped region and what about the size it has a moderate size moderate size moderate size moderate size and heavily doped then you have base region so this is the region which connect the emitter and collector region actually and it it does it has the role of uh, making them like uh, like it has a role as like mediator it is kind of mediator base is kind of mediator so the electrons or the charge carriers from emitter just pass through the base okay to the collector so it is actually very very thin region okay thin very thin region base region is very very thin you can see that right i have i think i have shown you here see the base region is very very thin base region is very very thin and it is very very lightly doped okay base region is very very lightly doped why lightly doped because base region will be having different type semiconductor suppose this is n type so it is p type semiconductor if it is p type emitter is p then then this base will be n type semiconductor why it has to be thinner because the majority charge carriers will come and come and pass through the base and during that there will be recombination between the opposite charges okay holes and electrons there will be recombination so base region is having opposite charge carriers majority and it is lightly doped so that most of the charge carriers which are emitting from emitter and passing through the base will not suffer recombination okay will not like take part in recombination most of the charge carriers should pass through the base to the collector region so that we get more current collector current okay so this is this is why base region is thin region and also lightly doped lightly doped lightly doped okay now let us see what is collector so collector as the name suggests it collects what it collects it collects the charge carriers which are emitted by elect uh, sorry emitted by emitter is actually collected by the collector so this is also moderately doped moderately doped but its area is the largest area it has largest area see this much is the this much i think you can think from here this is the collector region so it has the largest area of all like emitter has moderate area this has actually largest area okay and it is also moderately doped moderately doped so that the concentration of the charge carrier concentration of the charge carrier will be less in collector also so that you have more space to collect the charge carriers emitted by emitter which are coming through the base okay so these are base collector and emitter these are the roles also we have discussed what are the roles of the emit emitter collector and base okay emitter 
it has a role to supply the charge carriers and base region actually act as mediator and collector region collect the charge carriers and that's how the transistor works now we'll see in this case npn transistor case you have emitter based junction see this this is n and this is p so in case of in case of amplification so when we use if we want to use if we want to use a bjt bipolar junction transistor as an amplifier amplifier then what happens then eb junction emitter based junction has to be forward biased okay and cb collector based junction has to be reverse biased that is what we know so since emitter is of n type semiconductor if we want to bias this with external battery and external battery is given a name vee -E. this is external supply okay external battery which you need to bias the junctions so eb junction would we use one supply battery and another battery you need actually basically two batteries to bias this transistor and it has three terminals as i said so one terminal has to be common in this case this is see base region is common base region is common okay and similarly you can have emitter region common so that that is called common emitter circuit when the collector region is common then it is called common collector see Co common collector common emitter ce common emitter common collector and then common base so here we are just considering common base config configuration of the transistor biasing so in this case base region is positive so you, your battery terminal has to be connected with the base okay with the base you have connected connected so that you get forward biasing in this case okay forward bias so emitter based junction will be forward bias if this terminal is a negative terminal of the battery is reaching over here okay so this is the emitter based junction what is collector based junction this has to be reverse bias so this is n so you have to connect positive terminal of the battery battery vcc the battery used for battery used for biasing the collector based junction is named as vcc according to this notation and the emitter based junction is biased by a battery called vee vee -E. okay vee -E. now look we'll discuss the action part so what is the action how it acts see here this battery negative terminal is connected to n right and n type semiconductor has majority electrons so this negative terminal will actually repel the majority electrons from n region towards the base region okay it will just it will push or repel so that the electron enters from n n region to the base region or p region sorry emitter region to to base, base region so when the electrons enters into the 
base region then what they will see in the base region base region is p p type semiconductor that means they have whole majority carrier what they will see they will see holes sorry holes as the majority carrier over there but the base is lightly doped isn't it so holes are majority carrier in the base region but since it is very very lightly doped then it has few holes only few holes okay so when the electrons enter from like electrons enter from the emitter region to the base region then they will see the holes and some of the electrons they will recombine see suppose this is electron uh, sorry holes and this is electron okay so the recombination will happen between the electrons and holes this is hole and electron so when they recombine both holes and electron they will be disappearing right they will disappear so upon recombination recombination upon recombination electron and holes will be disappearing so what happens then one hole is actually miss missing here and one electron also will be missing here so as soon as one electron is missing or lost at immediately one electron will will enter from this emitter region to this base region again and what about holes holes actually holes will not be see there are no holes both sides so holes will not be replaced but one thing happens is that when the 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 recombination happens one electron is lo like disappearing then one electron from the negative terminal of the battery will go here and enter into the n region and subsequently that electron will go to the base region to make the concentration of the electron almost constant while passing through the base and at the same time one electron sorry one yeah so there will be actually there will be one electron which will come through the base region to this positive terminal of the battery one electron will come to here because see there should be a charge conservation followed so one electron is going from here to here so at the same time one electron will come from base region and it will come or attracted to the positive terminal of the battery over here so this is how there will be a base current generated at the same time electron uh, emitter current also generated see emitter uh, see electrons are going in this way electrons are going this way so emitter current will be in this way this is emitter current and this is the whole current okay whole current and there will be whole current in the sense not whole this is the total current ie is the total current because this ma this many charge carriers the number of charge carriers which are emitted by electron that much only will go up to here or constitute to the current but current see there can be of two current two types of current one is base current one is base current another one is collector current what is base current how it is appearing as i said when there is recombination electron is lost so one electron from negative uh, see n type will enter into the p region at the same time the electron will be supplied by the negative terminal of the battery to this n region and one electron from base region will come up to this 
positive terminal of the battery and gets neutralized so that's how the base current also will be generated so emitter current is generated because it is actually making electrons move from emitter to collector through base region okay that's why that ha that has current that is called emitter current and when the collector see when the see this junction see this base base junction is very very thin when the electrons enter here immediately they reaches to this junction this is another junction this is called collector base junction cb i am writing collector base junction and this collector base, whenever the electrons comes to this near the collector junction collector base junction then they will be immediately pulled out to the collector junctions why because collector junction has positive terminal very high pot positive terminal positive potential if it is at very very high or large potential uh, like uh, positive potential this end region then the electrons over here at the junction will be attracted easily towards the collector okay and then those electrons immediately go to the positive terminal of the collector biasing bolt uh, battery so this is the whole process this is the whole process how we get currents different currents we are getting so the total current is ie and then another two current we got one is due to base region that is the base current and another one is due to the charge carriers like movement of the charge carriers due to collector region like uh, collector in the collector so current in the base current in the collector and current in the emitter okay the total current is the sum of the base current and collector current and it is seen that this base current is actually very very less very very less much much less it has a value much much less than ie or ic okay very very less almost 5 percentage so base current is very very less so most of the current so we can write the current equation as i e is equal to okay i b plus i c and sometime it is written as i e is equal to since i b base current is in the micro range and very very small amount of current so i e sometime it is written that i e exactly equal to ic okay so ie is exactly equal to ic it is said okay so i have discussed the working principle or how npn transistor acts okay so this is so first of all you need to bias it so as an amplifier if you want to use emitter based junction has to be forward bias so you have a battery B, uh, BEE, it has both the terminals, so negative terminal will be connected to negative side or negative end side, so that you get okay, so so that you get forward biasing over here and this collector based junction is actually biased by BCC battery okay, and positive terminal of the battery is connected to this end region 
ओके नाउ वी हैव सीन डिपेंडिंग ऑन द बायसिंग चार्ज कैरियर स्टार्ट फ्लोइंग ओके इमिटर विल इमिट द चार्ज कैरियर देन द इमिटेड चार्ज कैरियर विल पासिंग विल पास थ्रू द बेस रीजन एंड इट दे विल बी कलेक्टेड बाय द पॉजिटिव टर्मिनल और हाई पोटेंशियल ऑफ द yes so of the of the battery biasing battery bcc so we have discussed the action also so i'll just give you a simple task for you and then stop the class here itself today see we have discussed the npn transistor you can just read from your book how pn transistor pn junk uh, sorry pnp transistor works according to the biasing and one more thing when eb junction is forward biased forward biased and collector based junction is reverse biased then it is said that the transistor is in active state transistor is is in active state active region or active state okay and um, uh, when we use the transistor as an amplifier we always you uh, do the biasing such that transistor will be in active region or active state in case of switching xn in case of switching action both forward bias sorry uh, there there are two things cut off region also we will see that cut off region and saturation region when the transistor is saturation at in saturation region when both the junctions are forward bias and when both the junctions are reverse bias then they are called that state is called the cut off state cut off state and saturation state and active state there are three states of action of transistor one is active state when the emitter based junction is forward bias and collector based junction is reverse bias this is cb collector based junction collector based junction is at rp okay so in case of pnp transistor there will be holes as majority carriers and they will pass through the base region okay and during Uh, passing through the base region there will be see this is n now pnp this is the n region there will be minor majority holes in the uh, like electrons in the base and there will be recombination again and again one electron will be coming from base uh, sorry one electron go from negative terminal of the battery to base region and one electron will be collected from base region to sorry emitter region to the battery so that is actually will give uh, emitter current and base current and when the electrons sorry holes are collected by the uh, collector region then collector current is arising okay so this working or actions of transistor you should read from your ncert textbook or maybe some other sources also and see whether you can understand now if not you can ask me in the next class Deepa, do you have any specific question? Otherwise, we'll stop it here. Do you have anything to ask me? Okay. If you don't have any question, we'll stop it here for today. Thank you for your presence. We'll take up this topic in continuation. in the next class on sunday okay so bye for today